What's up guys, GD here. So Dream Theater's new single, Night Terror, dropped just a few days back and while everybody's on the race to create the first solo cover or the first guitar cover on the internet and create a world record for it, my journey is slightly different. I'm all about tone always if you know about the channel and when I heard the track, Petrucci's tone never disappoints. Whether you like a track or not, there's one thing about Dream Theater that you can always count on is Petrucci's tone and like always his tone is phenomenal here and so I set right out as to how I can come close to his tone but that also means that I have to get close to his playing and my playing is not at par at the moment with the track I would say. It's a bit sloppy but it was fair enough to get me close to the tone. Hopefully this gives you a start as to how to create the tone yourself. Stick around till the very end, hopefully you get some tips and tricks and I'll you let you know in parts of the videos where and what to tweak so that you can tweak those things and get closer to the tone on your gear and your situation as well. Everybody's gear, hands and the setup is different so naturally tone is going to be slightly different across the board. So without further ado, let's jump into the Axe 2 and let's dial it in. All right, so like always, I've got the axe edit in front of me and we are starting off with a blank preset like we usually do on any preset on the channel. I like to go block by block and break down each block and tell you what I used so that you can tweak it further to enhance it or to suit it to your gear. So let's start off with the amp. I'm sure JP is rocking 15, you know, JP2C plus his signature guitar amp from Mesa Boogie on the track, but we don't have that in the XFX2. But is that gonna stop us? It never has and probably never will. So let's go ahead and choose the amp. There are plenty of other Mark series amps available in the XFX2, which can help you come close to the tone, if not dial it in perfectly, but you know, there are so many options to choose from which one do you go for you've got the you know 2c plus you've got the 2c plus plus you've got the mark 4 you've got the mark 5 i think it's a matter of choice i have always been inclined towards the uc usa 2c plus plus amp in the xfx2 i find it incredible and it's i've used it a lot but for this tone i went ahead with the usa 2c plus amp in this case uh, this is one of john's favorite amps from the previous era of dream theater and I'm sure it's been a huge inspiration towards the creation of JB2C Plus amp as well. Um, so there are different channels you can choose from in the XFX2. I went ahead with the USA 2C Plus Bright option, option. And obviously there is no signal jail complete without and cab as well. So we're going to put a cab as well. Now for the cab, uh, I like to go Studio Ultraless in this case. Um, there are... You've always heard Petrucci talk about how he likes to use uh, 4x12 uh, standard rectifier cabinets for his setup. Uh, those are V30s with Celestian speakers. There are plenty of them available here in the XFX2 as well. Um, you have a V30 Petrucci cab as well, which you can use as well, but I feel that it's slightly more darker in terms of tone and you have to tweak it a lot to kind of get it to bright and to suit your tone and to create the kind of tone you want to create. Um, so I did not use that. I've always been a huge, huge fan of these two cabs over here. This is the F073 and F074. These are 4x12 USA traditional cabs, uh, Celestian V30 speakers again. These are pre mic and from ML Audio, you can see the mic ranges over here. We're gonna use that and we're gonna use the other one, which is uh, another 4x12 USA traditional uh, cabinet again mic differently so we will keep everything at stock i have not touched the amp at all uh, i have not touched the cab at all by the way i'm playing my jp15 everything is on stock uh, i haven't modified this guitar at all i'm on the bridge pickup the volumes on full the tones on full and this is how it sounds <laughs> The amp doesn't anywhere sound close to what it should sound and that's why we are here. We are here to tweak it and to make it work. Uh, Mesa Boogie amps can be a little tricky to dial in, but don't worry, I've got you covered. We're going to dial it properly the way it's supposed to be dialed. So uh, first thing we need is more gain. Um, obviously, this is a high gain preset, so I'm going to have more gain in there. Uh, overdrive, I kept it to around low, which is around 7.5. We don't want too much overdrive. 
Uh, this is not a solo preset, this is more of a rhythm preset, so I like it to keep it a little low. Uh, with the bass, mids and trebles, you want to dial them in a specific way. You want low bass and you want low mids and not too much high treble. We're going to come to that when we you know, look at the GEQ section. Uh, the way Mesa Boogie amps are set up, the GEQ is what is post gain. So you definitely have more gain applied once you have the GEQ you know, tweaks done. So for the bass, we're going to keep it low around 1.9 uh, you know, or something. Let's keep it there. Mid, I'm going to bring it down to 2.3 and treble, I'm going to push it to around 6.7. Um, as I said, this is a standard sort of a implementation that you will see with most Mesa Boogie amps that I have at least dialed in. Uh, presence, you want to bring it up, but not too much. Otherwise, it's going to get ice picky for the treble. I think it's good for the presence. I think it's good to keep around seven. Master volume, I did not touch at all. I'm going to keep it as it is and let's hear how it's sounding right now. It's good, it's got that gain, but it doesn't have any body and it's not having that scooped sort of a mid sound that Petro G usually has. So what we're going to do is next go into the GQ section. This is where most of the magic happens uh, and these are the faders that you will usually see in the front of the amp which is known to be having that famous V curve that Petrucci has to kind of create that mid scoop sort of a tone. So this is again by taste. This is where you will probably play most of your time trying to tweak it to your gear. If you want to tweak it, use these faders, but use them slightly. Use them with a gentle bit of grace because if you turn them up too much and down, they can drastically change your tone. So for the 80 fader, we're going to go around 4.32. 240, just keep it at zero. 750 is the fader, which is your primary mid focused fader. Uh, you wanna keep this low to have that scoop sort of a sound. I've talked about this enough on the channel. So you wanna bring this down to around minus 6.5. Again, the higher you go, the more thicker your tone is gonna get. So maybe for solo presets, you wanna have this a little higher, but for this, since being a rhythm preset, we're gonna keep it slightly low. Uh, for the 2200, I kind of kept it to 1.2 and 6600. This is the top end now. You don't want this too high. It's going to get ice picky again. Find the sweet spot for me. It's around one of one at it's around at default kind of you can say. So with that done, this is how it sounds. <laughs> It's getting there, definitely it has that kind of vibe that we want. So that's the basic setup for the amp. I'm not gonna to touch the amp anymore. Let's go into the cab, right? So I'm gonna change the pan to zero. I want them centered. You can keep them left or right, that's okay. Um, I think Petrucci is a huge fan of the room sound of the mics as well. And I've heard him talk about it a couple of times and you can choose a room mic even in his signature uh, plugin that he's got out with uh, Neural DSP, I believe. So we're gonna simulate some sort of room uh, level over here, not too much. What we're gonna do is keep the room level around 30% and room size to around seven, right? Um, and then what we also gonna do is add some low cut and high cuts. So this low cut, I'm gonna keep it at 90. This cuts off some of that low end, which you don't want. Um, the bass should be driving the low end primarily in your track. Um, the high cut, I'm gonna bring it down as well. This is too high at the moment. I think around 5,600 is what sounds really good in terms of this. Again, if you're feeling that your preset is dull and it's lacking the top end, this is one of the places that you can also play with and tweak this fader up to have more top end from the amp come through. Again, I won't recommend going all the way, but you know, suit your style of playing and suit your gear and find that sweet spot which works for you. This might not work for you as well. So with that done, this is how it sounds. Charles. that's really nice but I feel we need a bit of a boost in the amp so what I like to do at times and it's a bit flubby as well on the low end what I like to do is put a drive block in the front if I can find it 
uh, here is a drive block what we're going to do is use a t808 this is primarily just for a little bit of boost and to tame some of that you know low end drive i'm not going to keep any drive as i said it's just for a boost uh, the tone i'm going to bring it slightly down we want it fat at the same time not too ice picky 11 i'm going to push it all the way up to 10 and this is how it sounds <laughs> That sounds really good, right? So that's the kind of tone we're chasing. The next thing I like to add in most of my Protrucci presets is a chorus. Now, I don't even know if he used any chorus over here. Sounds like he has, and he always likes to use some chorus, sometimes in the beginning of his signature, a signal chain as well, before the amp. Who knows what these guys use in the studio, right? <laughs> we can only try to come so close to what they've got on the signal chain. So chorus, I'd like to use Dimension 1, which is a uh, Petrucci requested uh, chorus block added into the XX2, if you did not know, some little bit of trivia over there. Uh, rate, I'd like to bring it down as low as I can. We're not gonna have too much chorus, otherwise it's gonna sound too modulated. So we're gonna bring the mix down to 11%. Uh, depth, I think I brought it down to around 24%. Don't want too much depth in there. I don't think I touched anything else in here. What I did do is go into the tone block and I changed the dimension mode to high. This is something that I always do. Now keep in mind that this part is not fully up to tempo yet, but focus on the tone guys, okay? Don't focus on my playing. <laughs> That sounds really cool. The next thing and the final thing probably that I added in the uh, preset was uh, enhancer block. Now, Petrucci always talks about a seven millisecond split between his left and right signal chain. Uh, I've got a complete video on that if you wanna check it out on the channel. There are ways to do it in the XFX2. The complicated way is to use a delay block up here and have a seven millisecond delay to branch out from your actual signal chain. See that video, you'll explain, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about, but the easier way to do it and the quicker way to do it is use an enhancer block. What you can do is simulate a sort of a stereo spread using the enhanced block. Uh, these are, again, just by taste purely, change them to suit your needs and to suit your style of playing and to your gear as well. So width, I kept it around 40% and I think the depth, I went up to around 60% and make sure you go the high cut all the way otherwise you're going to lose some top end over there as well so with that done this is how it sounds <laughs> Great sounding preset in my opinion, you can use it for other tracks as well. And for the longest time, 2C++ has been one of my favorite amps in the XFX2, but I think I'm inclined more towards the USA 2C++ these days. Fantastic sounding amp, and it's not very hard to dial in once you get the tricks under your belt. Hopefully this video has been helpful and it can get you closer to create the tone that is used on the track and hopefully you can be the first world record wait that's already out now hopefully you can create the second world record of the quickest cover on the internet i know i'm not going to do it so you're going to beat me to it for sure and if you're new to the channel go into the channel and check out some of the tones that i've got there's a lot of petrucci stuff in there if you like the stone i'm sure you're going to like what else is there on the channel as well Everything on the channel is always free and it always will be. So if you like the content, make sure you give this video a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. It really helps me as a YouTuber to push forward. I rarely get time to create much videos these days, but I'm doing whatever I can. So make sure you do your part as well. Keep the channel going and keep the love flowing and I'll keep the presets flowing as well. Hope you guys are doing well and safe wherever you are. And until I see you guys in the next video, Make sure you keep rocking. Cheers. Bye-bye.